Thank you. I think this is working. Marvellous. Hello, everyone. How are you? you? Having a good day? Yeah. You can clap. You don't have to clap. Um, Sorry, can I sit down? The, uh, the sound man just had a heart attack. Sorry. Uh, but it's okay. Don't worry. Um, we have half an hour to discuss this. First of all, apologies. Please don't uh, take a photograph and tweet, oh, my God, an all-male panel. Un un I didn't pick the panel, so unfortunately, it's, that's, it's a manal, it's a manal, as they say. But uh, these guys are relevant to this to the discussion, so uh, I don't know what their pronouns are, but we should be we'll maybe find out. Um, we're going to be discu discussing uh, combining security and innovation with a disconnected sovereign cloud. Well, that is obviously the driest top topic imaginable, but it's quite relevant now in in terms of what's going on in terms of things like generative AI, the the, the fight between Europe and the U.S. in terms of platforms. Where does computing go next, effectively? Uh, there's a whole lot of big debate going on in, in terms of where we're going to basically be producing the big new platforms of the future for corporates, for startups. Is it going to be here in Europe? Is it going to be in the US? Is it going to be in China? Hopefully not. And uh, what does that mean for companies? So we're going to, we're going to unpack these subjects with uh, my panel. First of all, Gerard Hoffman uh, is to my left. He is CEO of Proximus Luxembourg, uh, which uh, Proximus, I dare say, you are familiar with. Then we've got uh, Paul uh, Kronsbrook, who's CEO of Lux Connect over there, um, and, and also an ex-journalist, I was reading. So he's, he's going to, so he's going to sit here judging me the whole time. Yes, of course. He's going to like, oh, my God, Mike, you know, terrible questions. Um, and uh, Joris uh, Shunis, who's uh, ex Message bird, actually, who, which we've covered a lot on TechCrunch, but uh, he's now left those startup days behind, and he's now managing director of Google Cloud Benelux. Let's have a round of applause for our panel, everybody. Yes, let's do that. Uh, there's actually a partnership, breaking news that kind of kind of came out uh, not that long ago. So there's going to be a partnership between Google Cloud, Pro Google Cloud Proximus, and Lux Connect. So basically. It's a little bit like having the triumphant of Caesars uh, on stage here, you know, during the, th the you know, if you're, those of you know, know your Roman, Roman history, uh, a little bit like that. Um, and the idea is to work on this disconnected sovereign cloud services. Now, let's go, let's start off with, um, uh, let's off with start off with Google. Google. So, Mr. Google, what is a sovereign cloud service? A sovereign cloud. That's a very good question, so and yeah. super relevant. Um, so we take it very, very seriously, especially here in the heart of Europe. Uh, we see actually three layers of sovereignty. So first we have, of course, the data layer. The second layer is the software layer. And then the third layer is, let's say, the operational layer. So if you really want to bring all of this, let's say, to the local country and meet all the regulatory needs that there are, is that's why we also launched cloud on Europe's terms. So cloud on Europe's terms. Yes, we're an American company, but if you want to, as a you know, public organization or a commercial organization or you really like a startup, if you really want to meet all those requirements and still benefit from the cloud, that's why we're really teaming up here with you know, LuxConnect and Proximus to really bring this actually to life so you can also meet you know, all, the, all the requirements while still benefiting from the cloud. I see. So, Paul, what was the problem that you're trying to solve with this? Where did you see the market need? First, um, you're right about me having been a journalist in my early life, but I also have been working with politicians for quite some time. So I do not intend to answer your questions, but I'm just going to say whatever I want. <laughs> Spoken like an ex-journalist. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is that uh, when we talk about uh, cloud solutions, we are a data center provider here in Luxembourg, and we witness that there are more and more major companies that do a migration towards uh, a cloud. So they have their cloud uh, strategies in their companies. That is something that uh, is a harm to our companies as a wholesale data center provider. Uh, the thing but often is that, of course, uh, people are in our data centers because they are high and high standard uh, data centers, and they are close to their own business. So what people want, they want to know where their data actually is, physically is, 
And uh, this is what we tend to solve with this solution. So we have a cloud solutions for such uh, companies, businesses, public entities, and we can guarantee that still the data is hosted in, in Luxembourg in center of Europe. I see. So the, there's this sort of market pressure to actually know much more about location of data. Um, that's really interesting. So um, next up, I mean, uh, Gerard, um, with, um, with uh, Proximus, um, as a telco, obviously, uh, you know, data is part and parcel of what you guys do. But um, why did you, what's your involvement in this partnership? Okay, so uh, my guess, uh, we are going to operate uh, the platform uh, here out of Luxembourg and uh, the problem that we are trying to address is, of course, to solve the dilemma between innovation and, uh, yeah, uh, sovereignty, really. Um, we, uh, as Paul mentioned, uh, we see a lot of our clients that move uh, to the public cloud, but they don't necessarily do it with a peace of mind. There's always this thought that you know, something could happen to the data or somebody could, put the pl pull, could pull the plug. So there's a sort of a risk associated there, there's, with it. There's a certain risk associated and we address certain dimensions of that risk. Uh, the risk of you know, uh, having uh, loss of operation and also regulatory risk. Um, so we're addressing that, that big dilemma and also we're trying to uh, anticipate uh, regulatory changes that are coming, uh, especially in Europe. Uh, there is a lot of things that have already been uh, regulated by GDPR, everybody knows. But there's also DORA that uh, uh, will, uh, has been decided earlier this year that will come into force in 2025. That's the regulation for the financial sector, which will have a lot of... Uh, sovereignty uh, requirements, and then there is the Digital uh, Services Act, of course. And all these things we're trying to anticipate. Um, now, Luxembourg has been you know, identified by Google as a very good candidate for uh, bringing this technology to Europe because Luxembourg has a long tradition in regulation, mainly in the financial sector. So we have a 20-year-long tradition of uh, really, you know, sovereignty constraints in uh, the finance sector. We, as a, as a telco and uh, IT operator, we know that uh, environment very well. And so this is a very good, um, let's say, uh, seeding ground for this kind of technology. And I want to say that it is really groundbreaking, this technology. It is a paradigm change. It is a game changer. It's the first time that uh, a hyperscaler, in this case Google, uh, delegates the operation of their technology to a third-party telco and uh, in the world. We learned this this week. We, have it, we, you know, we had Google in our offices. They confirmed that we are the first in the world to do this, and we are really proud that we can do this. And Luxembourg is key because of our environment, the history, the heart of Europe, and the regulatory experience that we have. Oh, very interesting. So, you, you know, so that, that there's, this is a first-time event. Um, it, it, you know, why did, why did uh, Google kind of press the green light on this decision? Yeah, we, see, we see a massive shift and focus towards more, you know, compliance and regulations. And I think while launching this kind of solution, and it's, again, it, we're not talking about security, okay, because you know, there are few companies actually can meet our you know, security requirements. This is about more you know, trust, making sure that your data is local, the systems are local, and what's maybe an interesting fact, people think, hey, we're going to use, uh, in this case, the Google platform, but who is the contracting party? The contracting party is not going to be Google, okay? So you, you as an organization are not, a, not going to contract with Google. You're going to contract here with the local people and local company, and it's going to be operated also by the local people in a completely disconnected way. So there's a massive amount of demand right now for, uh, for that. I see. Paul, um, you, you, obviously you, you're involved a lot in uh, you know, data centers and on-premise thing. Do you think this has significance in terms of on-premise AI? Uh, a lot of people talking about how you know, generative AI is basically going to, a lot of it's going to go on-premise inside data centers, 
Uh, you talked about people want to know, wh know where the data is. Um, do you think that there has a, has a significance for, for that uh, aspect of the market? Well, you know, we are, uh, as a data center provider, we, today we do not touch uh, the data. So we actually, you could compare us to a hotel where you can rent your own room and you can do in that room whatever you want. So it's what uh, those guys, like Gerard, who is present here, um, who are our direct clients who are going to deal, to deal with, the, with the data. And I think that in the future also these AI solutions will be part of it. And with this uh, joint venture that we are creating now, it is the first time also for LuxConnect that we are entering also into the service world. And we are very happy and proud that we can actually cooperate with uh, two partners here that have their own experience, and especially Google, um, who, who, is, uh, who is already in, involved in this. So I would like to pass that question to one of those guys. Right, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you, Paul, for that. So, so if you look at AI and now generative AI, we really compare this. It's a massive transformation and revolution. We really compare this with actually the arrival of the internet, or actually the shift to mobile. It's that big, you know. So we're super excited, and we're all, I think, living in a very exciting time from that perspective. So it's very good in doing a couple of things that AI. So and you know, our recommendation is make sure you know you really start experimenting with, with it. Okay, so disrupt or be disrupted, but really be bold, experiment, but do it in a very responsible way. So. There's obviously a lot of sensitivity around this kind of data. So what kinds of, give us a, a, a flavor of what kinds of customers might go for this. Well, um, partly it is the kind of customers that we do have today already physically in our data centers. Uh, who is that? It's, it's large public entities. It's of course also private uh, industry, uh, the financial sector, the health sector, and others. Basically, it could be Everybody who is, as I pointed out before, sensitive about where the data actually is and uh, who do you trust it with. And that is something that, nevertheless, I also want to point out because I told you that I'm not entirely answering your questions. I think that the element of trust is um, key for us here. And it's partly it's the trust into this country, Luxembourg, where you can trust on the infrastructure that we have um, there are obvious points like, um, as, as I said before, the infrastructure, the quality of the infrastructure when it comes to data centers, to connectivity, but it also uh, the infrastructure of the electric uh, grid, for example, and others. So it's basically companies, the comp uh, sorry, the customers, the users of the of the sovereign cloud solution that we that we that we target are all those people where that trust element is key for the function of the organization of their business and so on i think classic customers would certainly be uh, huge companies but also uh, companies from the defense and all those who are keen about uh, where the data actually is for now i want to say thank you very much to our panel to gerard from um, uh, uh, Jared from Proximus, Paul from LuxConnect, and uh, Joris from Google Cloud. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, please thank our panel. <laughs>